All right, this is the Algebra 1 practice EOC question number 40. Again, I think it's test 3. Uh, it says subtract y cubed plus 5y squared minus 3y minus 2y squared minus 4y plus 1. This problem is actually really, really fun and kind of easy. Uh, no one really likes dealing with subtraction. Not a whole lot of people like this at all, actually. So what I would tell you to do is go ahead and change this to addition. And the way you do that is just multiplying everything by negative 1 because that's going to change the sign, make this a nice easy addition problem for us, and we like addition. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this left parenthesis because I haven't done anything to it, okay? I said I was going to change this to a plus sign and then distribute my negative 1. So this is going to become a negative 2y squared. This is going to become a positive 4y. And then this is going to become a negative 1. Well, now all I have to do is add together my things that are alike, okay? If you look here, we have a y cubed. Well, I don't think we have anything else that also has a y to the third power with it. So since this is my only thing that has a y cubed, I have to bring that down, and that's part of my final answer. So I have to bring down my y cubed. Well, at this point, you can go ahead and look and see, oh, well, there's nothing my, in my answer choices. This has a negative y cubed, and this also has a negative y cubed. So neither one of these can be right, because I know that I have to have a positive y cubed at the beginning. So we know we're looking at C and D, and we have a 50% chance of getting this right. Yay for probability, okay? If you look at this here, you also have a 5y squared, and then you want to find something else that also has a y squared with it. Well, if you look you have a negative 2 y squared that also has a y squared with it. Well, once I put that together, you have $5. I take away two of those dollars, you're going to have three of them. So you have three y squareds, OK? Well, again, you can look at your answer choices, and you still think either one of these could be right. All right, now let's go to our y's. We now want to look at our negative 3y, and then we have a positive 4y, OK? If you have $4 and I take three of them away from you, you're only going to end up with $1. So you have a plus y. And at this point, we can realize that, hey, this doesn't say plus y. This says negative 7y. But for all intents and purposes, let's just go ahead and finish this. If you bring down your negative 1, you see that there's nothing else that has a number by itself with it. So you know that negative 1 has to be in your final answer somewhere here. And if you look, that matches up perfectly with D. Welcome, everyone. I, I'm sure a few of you have moments in your day or in your life where you get to a test day, you knew how to do it when you left, and you get there and you get nervous and you forget it. All your hard work for the semester doesn't have to be ruined. Now, the method that we've shown you in the beginning of this problem is, you know, a mathematically sound method, and it works. Um, its teachers teach it to you because they have integrity. I don't have any of that, so I'm going to show you a method to use. If you know, worst case scenario, you get really nervous on test day and you forget how to do this problem for some weird reason. The problem's not that difficult to do, but I'll show you a way that you can get it anyway. Now, I'm going to use the fact that the calculator. Uh, has you know mathematical processes that helps it graph. It, this pretty much only works with a graphing calculator, by the way. And I'm going to use the uh, button for the variable. So I'm going to turn this thing on and clear that all out. Now my variable value now, which you've probably never hit that button and hit enter to see what it was. Well, it's zero when you first turn it on. Yours may be anything. As long as it's not zero, it should work. If you get an error, then you'll have to change it. And I'm going to show you how to change it. Your window value. It's not initially set, but eventually, when you turn it on, it should be something like negative 10 and 10. If I want my x value to change to 5, I would change it to negative 5 and 5. The reason it says 10 now and it uh, says 0 on the other screen is because I haven't graphed anything. That's the part that matters. So I need to graph something. I'm going to graph 3x plus 5 or whatever. It, has, it should be linear if you want it to have a reasonable x value that makes sense, and then graph it. Now the calculator has it in its mind that that's the, what you're doing when you're graphing. So you can go back to the original page, hit your variable, and now it's 10. So what I can do with this information is look at the problem. You'll notice that the y's are there. It's just y. There's no other variable in it. So I can use that um, sub, this x value, the variable that you would substitute in for graphing, uh, kind of as a plug-in. So x to the third power. 
and do yourself a favor and click over after you raise something to the third power, otherwise you'll type forever and not realize that, oh, whoops, I, uh, everything's still being raised to a power. Minus 3x. Could you use y that's on the alpha menu? Yes, but it's the only one you can use. You can't use the a, b, c, and d. They don't have values that, that match. In fact, if you have two variables in your equation, you can use the x and the y together. So minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. So that's all there, and it works fine and dandy. So you hit enter, and you get 1309. So I'm going to write 1309 right here. Now from here, all I have to do is type in my answer choices, and the one that's 1309 is the answer. Be very careful if there are things factored out in front. If these had numbers or variables factored out in front of them, more than one of them could potentially be uh, 1309 when you type it in. You need to pick the one of those that's the most factored, so the most numbers in front is generally the rule. Like I said, this isn't the time-tested method of math. It's sort of a, a glitch in the calculator that we're using to our advantage. So we found out that it was D originally, so let's just show that to be th true. Thirteen oh nine. So it matches. I'll show you one of the other ones to show you that it doesn't work. So negative x to the third power plus x squared minus 2x. You type all that in, which would be this one right here, a, you hit enter. It's not 1309. So you know it's not the right answer. Like I said, there's no validity to this method other than the fact that it just happens to work. Don't get used to it. It shouldn't be your mathematical method of choice, but you know, this is your worst case scenario use case, I guess. So good luck with it.